Greetings. This will be the tenth video in a series regarding the direct corresponding relationship between major earthquakes, significant volcanic eruptions, and the solar eclipse. This video will be focused on the Cascadia Subduction Zone. The Cascadia Subduction Zone is a 1,000 km long dipping fault that stretches from northern Vancouver Island to Cape Mendocino in northern California. It separates Juan de Fuca and North American plates. Ancient Native American folklore speak of a supernatural battle between a thunderbird and a gigantic whale around the year of 1700, which were in battle against various tribes. Although the story has multiple slightly different versions, the general thread tends to be the same. Eventually the thunderbird lifted the whale out of the sea and left it to die on land, but not before a terrible struggle took place. This generated an enormous oceanic tsunami, one which resulted in some rather powerful waves washing up over the shores. Villages were annihilated, and entire forests were chopped down in a blink of an eye. There are no written records of the 1700 Cascadia earthquake. Orally transmitted legends from the Olympic Peninsula era tell of the epic battle between the Thunderbird and the Whale, a 1996 study published with tsunami evidence across the Pacific. Japanese annuals, which have recorded natural disasters since approximately 600 CE, had reports of a 16-foot tsunami that had struck the coast of Honshu Island during the Genroku. Since no earthquake had been observed to produce it, scholars dubbed this an orphan tsunami. Translating the Japanese calendar, Sataki found the incident had taken place around midnight of January 27, 1700, ten hours after the earthquake occurred. The original magnitude 9 earthquake in the Pacific Northwest had thus occurred around 9pm Pacific Standard Time on January 26, 1700. Since we now have an exact date and time, we can do an astrological map and have a look at the planetary geometries that were taking place at this particular time of January 26, 1700. Left hand side geocentric and right hand side heliocentric. Now it's very rare to have both sides very strong and we got that in 1700. Note that we had a near grand trine or within three degrees between the planets of Mars, Uranus and Saturn. Mercury was conjoining Jupiter. Saturn was near conjoining Venus. And then we had a series of squares, Mars, Pluto, Uranus, Neptune, and Sun, Mars, all significant. And the Earth was opposing Pluto on this day. We're now moving our attention to the right-hand side and looking at this heliocentrically. And note that the chart is perhaps even more stronger than the geocentric side. Note that we had a series of oppositions taking place, all pretty much on the same day. Venus was opposing Mercury, Neptune opposing Mars, while Jupiter was opposing Uranus. A very powerful day with three oppositions all taking place simultaneously. Just comparing the 1700 Cascadia earthquake with the largest earthquake ever recorded, the 1960 Valdivia earthquake of Chile. Note the symmetry with the 1960 Valdivia earthquake and the 1700 Cascadia earthquake with their grand trine aspect in the geocentric side and also sharing a heliocentric aspect with multiple oppositions taking place on that same day. This powerful earthquake event of 1960 lasting a full 10 minutes of shaking, some agencies reported as high as 9.6 magnitude. It is worth noting that just two years prior to this major event, we had a solar eclipse termination note across South America, forewarning this event to come. This major earthquake of 1700 was preceded by a total solar eclipse of 1697. In the month of April, this total solar eclipse termination was entering just the top end of the Cascadia subduction zone through Alaska. This is a significant total solar eclipse, and we know this termination just entering just north of Queen Charlotte Island and into Canada. There's not much information online regarding Cascadia earthquake events, however, there is one website that gives a much more detailed snapshot of past major events in the region by using the Ghost Forest Tsunami Mapping Technique. The best part of this website is that it actually gives us an exact date or an approximate time frame of past events so we can investigate their past related solar eclipse relationships. We are given a periodicity of 700 years on average for every magnitude 9 plus earthquake for Cascadia, but an event of slightly smaller scale magnitude 8 to 8.8 is estimated to occur roughly every 246 years. Since the last event was 1700 that would mean that we are seemingly overdue for another event of this scale magnitude 8 to 8.8 .8, and perhaps a long way away from a much larger event, perhaps 100 years. Looking back, I've found some past events that share an interesting correlation with the October 2023 solar eclipse, which has caught my attention. And just by focusing on the entry points of these solar eclipses, I suspect that we are entering another window where we potentially may receive another earthquake registered over 8 magnitude for the Cascadia subduction zone. 
We're now looking back at the annual solar eclipses of 587 BC and the 1466 AD solar eclipses and just focusing on the entry node aspect of both of these eclipses or their actual starting point. Note the close proximity of the first contact of the Moon's shadow to the Earth. Now looking at the 2023 annual solar eclipse and it shares an interesting symmetry right back to the 1466 annual solar eclipse. Almost identical path, just a little bit of separation between both. Now if both of these past solar eclipses were harbingers for significant earthquakes for Cascadia, this may imply that the 2023 annual solar eclipse could also be a harbinger of a future event to come, which may imply of a very significant earthquake potentially greater than 8 magnitude between the years of right now right through to 2027. Having precise data is critically important if we need to use planetary geometry as a correlative tool. So there's much doubt with the information we are given with the exact dates. However, we don't need the exact date with the solar eclipse. We just need a year. If they were a year off with the Cascadia date, say 1701, we could throw away all the planetary correlations out the window. But we don't get that with the solar eclipse, as we had a very powerful solar eclipse of 1701, potentially even larger significance than the 1697 solar eclipse, which foreshadowed this event for Cascadia. We see the termination of the 1701 solar eclipse entering right through the Juan de Fuca plate. And noting that the 2023 October 14 solar eclipse, know that its entry point of the Moon's shadow on the Earth is entering the Pacific just short of the Juan de Fuca plate and will be entering just a little bit south of its previous solar eclipse termination and symmetry of 1466. Now the solar eclipse is actually giving us a three and a half year window of when a future earthquake event will be taking place. So if we assume that the earthquake date of January 26, 1700 is accurate, then we can use the actual planetary alignments that were occurring on this particular day and planetary geometries. And we can actually use that as a tool for a future event sharing the same symmetry back from the 1700 into a future time frame within the next 3.5 years. Now revisiting the 1700 Cascadia earthquake chart, geocentrically speaking, the key feature was the Mars Saturn Uranus Grand Trine and also the conjunction and opposition as well as a very important and significant T-square. And now the forecast using the preset criteria and looking ahead from this point in time, the first window that stands out as significant would be early October 2024. We get a Grand Trine aspect within 3 degrees involving Saturn, Venus and Mars. Mercury and Sun will be in conjunction while in square aspect with Mars. This is a significant time frame. I have assessed this time frame with the heliocentric and geocentric score from 72 to 65%. We're now looking ahead to the next date of focus and that comes in 2025. Again, the month of October stands out as significant. I have assessed the heliocentric and geocentric score up towards 90%. This is correlative right back to the Cascadia earthquake of 1700. So this is definitely a time frame to watch and monitor. We have a grand trine within one degree involving Pluto, Uranus and Venus. Saturn Neptune will be in conjunction. Mercury Mars will also be in conjunction on this time frame. Venus will be opposing Saturn and Neptune and we have a square aspect, Sun involving Jupiter. So a very powerful time frame that is significant and the geocentric chart is quite strong. That previous chart was October 14, 2025, just two weeks after we get another significant time frame. So the month of October is highly significant in 2025 as we get a very long and sustained Grand Trine aspect. It will be slightly weaker towards the end of the month, but the Jupiter-Saturn aspect is actually much more stronger within one degree. So this is definitely a time frame to watch and monitor the month of October 2025. We have the Sun-Jupiter square replaced by Jupiter-Venus square, but overall we have the geocentric score rising to 93% and the heliocentric score actually weakens, but this whole month is quite significant. And the final time frame to watch and monitor would be in May 2027, where we have an almost identical planetary geometry taking place heliocentrically, very close to what occurred late 1700 in January. A 95% correlation heliocentrically, and the correlation is very strong. The solar eclipse information gives us a 3.5 year window for this potential future earthquake event. And I have assessed it to potentially be as high as 8.5 magnitude, so definitely an earthquake event to watch and closely monitor. I have isolated just two months where this earthquake event could take place in October 2025, as it has a very strong geocentric appearance, and also in May 2027, as it has a very strong heliocentric appearance. It must be noted that a year prior to the Cascadia earthquake of 1700, we had a very tight inner solar system alignment 
involving Earth, Venus, Mercury with Sun. Note the height of the Venus orbit, very similar to what's occurring in March 2025. We get this again, the same correlation tying into a potential earthquake event for Cascadia. We can tie in the planetary alignment just a week after the major earthquake event of Cascadia into the previous earthquake of 1468, which shared a similar symmetry. And we get this very same planetary geometry taking place in May 2027. If we look back at the 1466 solar eclipse and tying it to the 1468 earthquake for Cascadia, and note that just two years prior we had a very interesting solar eclipse of 1464. Now if we actually have a look at what we've got taking place right now, the 2021 solar eclipse is very similar to the 1464, and the 1466 solar eclipse is similar to the 2023. I do feel that the 1466 solar eclipse and the 2023 solar eclipse are quite interesting and share an interesting symmetry. Now just two years after the 1466 solar eclipse we had a magnitude 8.7 earthquake that struck the Cascadia subduction zone so the main concern is that we may get a comparable event of similar magnitude so that is the reason for this video. I'm concerned about the similarities and symmetry between both of these solar eclipses and the Cascadia subduction zone. I'm also expecting a significant earthquake for the west coast of North America this year and primarily around the months of the supermoon. That's March, April, where we are right now. And also September, October will be the key months to watch and monitor. And a significant earthquake, this is definitely tied to the 2021 solar eclipse linked into the 1905 solar eclipse that preceded the Great San Francisco earthquake. We're going to look at two more earthquake events across Cascadia which shared an interesting symmetry, not only with the solar eclipse, but also planetary alignment. These were significant earthquakes and must be mentioned. The 1949 Olympia earthquake had the planetary alignment on April 13 of Venus, Mercury, Earth and Sun. This was a significant planetary alignment, as mentioned previously, and a magnitude 6.7 earthquake resulted. And in 1945, three and a half years prior to this earthquake event, we had the solar eclipse termination focus near this region. The Nisqually earthquake of 2001, magnitude 6.8, dubbed the Ash Wednesday quake, also had significant planetary alignments in play. And just prior, we had two solar eclipses. They were both partial solar eclipses, also focused around the region. And that concludes the 10th video in the series regarding the direct corresponding relationship between major earthquakes, volcanic eruptions, and the solar eclipse. For more information, please visit solarwatcher.net and quakewatcher.com. Would it be more information for members and subscribers as well as website newsletters? Thanks for watching.